Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from KX Nation, and for today's episode, today is a Dragalia Lost episode where we're gonna be going over the new fire units that came out in the current fire event. Okay, uh, upon the release of Chapter Nine, actually no, that that's not right. <laughs> the new fire event, though. <laughs> All right, so there's three units, well, two units and a dragon, okay? Uh, the first unit being Ramona, the second unit being her sister, Rena, and then the dragon being Arcos, okay? And I'm just gonna go over and get my thoughts about it. I've been doing some, I've been playing for a while now, what, about like a month or so now at this point, month or two? Um, and as well as the fact that I've also been kind of reading up on the wiki, uh, for this game and trying to catch up on what like a bunch of the units do and stuff So as far as I can tell there's not a whole lot of units in the game as of right now So it makes it fairly easy to kind of keep track of Like what's the meta more or less? Okay, like what's the state of the game is? Um, which isn't too bad. Okay, it's still in the first year of the game. So it's So far somewhat relatively simple to keep track of uh, and make judgments about but let's go ahead and go in order starting with Ramona. She's a five-star fire unit. She's an axe unit All right, uh, in case you don't know different weapon types tend to have different types of play styles and tend to have certain types of uh, stereotypical What's it called uh, Like stereotypical uh, personalities to them. Okay, or or uh, like attributes, there's, a, there's the word. Certain types of attributes, it's at them. Um, from what I can tell, axe units tend to be the more tanky type of units. Okay, but anyways, going on. All right, she has two skills. She, her first one is Forge Buster, deals flame damage to surrounding enemies continuously Continually tapping the screen during the attack will unleash additional blows with up to maximum of six blows Changing direction is possible during these additional blows. Uh, I have Ramona. I really like her first of <laughs> You just continue you just smash a bunch of times and it just it does a lot of damage uh, Her second ability is Smith shield increases the entire time's defense by 25% for 15 seconds I always really like the uh, the units that have Defense skills like this because then it makes it really easy to trigger any double buffs that any of your characters might have or any of the The worm prints that you might have attached to your characters. Okay, in case you don't know what a double buff is Double buff is essentially an ability that makes us that says whenever you receive a defense buff So and so happens All right, so of course any characters that provide defense buffs uh, on their own through their own skills or passive abilities Help trigger those automatically, which is super useful. All right, so her second ability provides a Defense buff by 25% which is pretty big I believe uh, by 15 seconds her co-ability in which a co-ability is simply when uh, When you team up with other people and co-op basically and increases defense by 15% which is pretty good her passive ability is called Prime Strength. Now this right here, I believe this is a new mechanic, uh, a new skill mechanic within the game for both her and Rena. Okay, they both share this new mechanic and it's really good in my opinion. Increases the strength of the adventurer you are currently controlling by 10% for 10 seconds every time their initial skill, so their first skill, their primary skill, uh, displayed at the top of their skill list becomes available for use after activating this ability will not activate again for 15 seconds so basically uh, whatever This ability will still apply regardless of which character you're controlling Okay, so you have four characters on a team and you can swap between them during battle whatever you're currently controlling Ramona's pass uh, this passive ability prime strength will still apply to whichever character you're currently controlling even if it's not Ramona herself All right this is really good because now was it that means that whenever you use the first skill of the character you're using they will get a 10 percent strength buff basically every every 15 seconds okay uh, which is pretty good you know you can definitely like stack it with some other uh dps heavy type heroes um at her max Update, she has a 100% sleep resistance, which is really good, especially against the uh, wind type. What's it called? Qu 
quests um, because the fact that wind type enemies tend to inflict sleep or I believe stun yeah sleep or stun on you so having resistance at least against the sleep is pretty good because uh, I think sleep lasts longer than stun all right and she also has a passive strength double buff uh, which m most characters don't have uh, increases strength by 13% for 15 seconds each time a defense up buff is received. So this is what I was coming back before, how double buffs typically say whenever you get a defense buff, so and so happens. Ramona has that as a passive ability, which is really good. So not only does just using her second uh, active ability trigger her own passive ability, her double buff, uh, increasing her strength, but her own first passive ability prime strength also increases her strength too so she actually she's super synergistic with herself um she's very self-reliant doesn't really need much support um you can kind of like throw her into like almost she's one of those units that you could like throw into like any any team and she would work well okay um very good uh but the main thing that i'm concerned about is the fact that she has the uh her second ability provides the the defense buffs as well as the fact that her uh, first passive ability provides strength buffs too okay so you can you can just have her on the team not even use her or be controlling her not even be controlling her and you would still be able to reap the benefits of her her abilities which is really good okay um, Rena now Rena is probably the more How should I say the more uh, DPS carry heavy out of the two? Okay, Rena or Ramona is more of like the the tank tank heavy uh, unit for the current the, out of the three units that came really came out, um, and it's more so kind of like she's just good to throw on like she can throw on practically like any any team and she would work out. Whereas Rena over here, I'll go over Rena. She's a, a five-star fire blade unit, okay? Her first ability, Roaring Furnace, deals flame damage to enemies in a line and inflicts burn. She activates skill shift if the attack connects. Skill shift is like, it's like stages of the skill. Um, each time you use the skill, it, like the skill goes up by one level and like on each level, it, it has additional benefits, okay? So on phase two, uh, it adds an additional 10% increase to the user's critical rate for 15 seconds, while phase 3 increases damage to burning enemies, um, which isn't too bad. Increasing critical rate is pretty decent. 10%, um, I don't think that's a whole lot. It's decent as far as I'm aware. Um, so you could maybe do a possible crit build with her, um, but the skill does sound like it relies a little bit on having to do damage on burning enemies which the skill does inflict but i believe there are some enemies that are resistant to burn so if you're not able to burn the enemy her first ability kind of ends up going mm, kind of being met um, second ability brazier boost immediately readies the roaring furnace skill for use her first ability and adds 50 percent to the modifier applied to critical damage for 20 seconds okay so this is actually not too bad because now her brazier boost basically helps tr uh, proc her or help trigger her roaring furnaces skill shift a lot quicker so if you like time it correctly you could actually go like roaring furnace wait a few seconds to like build up a little bit of meter for roaring furnace okay uh trigger roaring furnace again then proc brazier boost and then use roaring furnace a third time all right so essentially what happened is you you triggered roaring furnace first to inflict burn on an enemy so this is great if you're like doing it on a boss or something okay uh you inflict burn on the enemy okay then you then you wait a little bit build up again use roaring furnace then use brazier boost use roaring furnace again a third time uh back to back so what would happen is that the second time uh increases it by 10% the uh, the critical rate on top of the fact you're having critical damage increased by 50% because of the brazier boost all right and you also are doing additional damage from the phase three the level three of the the first ability okay 
um, due to gaining brazier boost to proc the third stage okay so you can basically do like high burst damage if you if you time it correctly with the the second ability the brazier boost okay so her co-ability increases strength of the entire team by 10 percent not too bad it's decent um her first passive ability is basically the exact same as Ramona's increases the defense of the adventure you are currently controlling by 15% for 10 seconds. Every time their initial skill displayed at the top of the skill list becomes available for use. After activating, this ability will not activate again for 15 seconds. So basically, Rena has the opposite of Ramona has, where it increases the defense of the character you're currently controlling when they activate their first ability rather than their increasing their strength. Okay, so Ramona increases their strength whenever they use their first ability whereas Rena increases their defense whenever uh, in, they, in, you, they use their first ability okay she also has the 100% sleep resistance and her double buff she has a healing double buff which grants an HP regeneration buff for 20 seconds each time a defense up buff is received so frankly out of the two units out of Ramona and Rena Personally, I believe Rena is better simply because of the fact that her uh, simply because of her passive. Okay, having both <laughs> her, her first passive alone is also is already ridiculous because that means that you can just have her sitting on your team, and whatever character you're controlling, every time every 15 seconds that you use your uh, your first ability, you will receive a defense up buff. Okay. And if you have a worm print on the character you're controlling that has a double buff on it, so like a strength double buff, not only are you getting the defense buff from Rena's passive, okay, but now since you got the defense buff from Rena's passive, it triggers your double buffs on whatever character you're controlling as well, which is pretty pretty good in my opinion really good um it's worth noting as well that her own passive triggers her own uh healing double of two which makes her really resilient and very hard to kill because she's just constantly healing then as well on top of the fact she has really nice burst damage if you can uh if you can time her, if you can like uh coordinate her cooldowns properly with her with her active abilities okay so out of the two rena is the lot more high value okay but takes but you have to be able to use her properly has a lot more high value whereas ramona is still pretty good as well but is a lot more uh less reliant on teammates okay um she could help teammates but is less a lot less reliant on her all right um but lacks a little bit of dps that rena does all right uh overall both units are pretty good in my opinion um obviously if you have both of them together on the same team it ends up being a very potent combo uh because not only they do they both provide defense buffs and strength buffs for each other helping proc your your double buffs like almost all the time all right um but you also have a pretty like pretty consistent uh decent amount of dps output together as well so overall not too bad the dragon for the set is arctos all right his first skill deals flame damage to enemies directly ahead and inflicts stun. His passive uh, is if the user is attuned to flame, increases strength by 45% and adds 55% to the modifier applied to critical damage. Okay. To be honest, from what I can tell, Arctos isn't too bad. He's kind of. How do I word it? He's basically he basically is just an upgraded version. Hold on, I have the the dragon. Uh, dragon. He's basically just an upgraded version. He's basically just like a tier five version, or a five star version of Ifrit, from what I can tell. Because Ifrit has almost the exact same thing. Okay, just without the critical, the critical uh, buff. Okay, so he increases strength by forty five percent as well. Ifrit's one of the the better uh, DPS dragons at the moment right now because I believe he has he has one of the highest strength. Uh, buffs among all the dragons despite being a four star four star dragon so the fact that arctos basically is the exact same thing as ifrit but also has a critical was a critical damage uh 
multiplier, I think it is. Hold on, let me check again. Yes, yeah. 55% critical damage multiplier, yeah. Um, which is pretty good in my opinion. Uh, especially if you're using it on heroes that rely on critical damage or like have critical damage builds. Um, hell, if you even have him on characters that already provide themselves increasing their critical hit rate, that's gonna help out a lot. So he's basically just a direct upgrade from Ifrit, uh, who is already one of the better DPS dragons in the game. All right, but in terms of raw DPS, they should say, uh, for the user. But other than that, uh, well, I mean, I guess there's Rennie too, but we'll go over as well. For Rennie, she's a four star dagger water unit. Okay, her first ability is deals water damage to the enemies directly ahead and inflicts bog. Uh, bog slows down enemies or units, whatever. Deals water damage to surrounding enemies, increases the user's defense by 10% for five seconds for a second ability. Uh, her co ability increases uh, critical rate by 10%, which is honestly actually not too bad. Uh, I always prefer increasing critical rate rather, rather than critical damage because if you don't even proc the critical hit in the first place Increasing critical damage doesn't really do much So increasing critical rates actually not too bad for a, uh, a team ability her passability prime devastation um, Is basically the same thing as her sisters except that increases critical rate rather than rather than strength or defense uh, She has 100% resist resistance to stun and she also has a healing double buff Okay, uh, it's worth noting that the double buff is not as strong though as Rena's. Okay, Rena, I believe, has a double buff of yeah, has healing double buff four, whereas Renny only has a, a double buff of one. Okay, so it's a huge difference. All right, she's not too bad though. Okay, for a four star unit, she's pretty decent. Um, the fact her second ability increases the user's defense by 10% and does damage is not too bad. Uh, definitely a decent four star unit because then again like i mentioned before you can then proc your own double buffs on top of the fact that she increases the critical rate of whatever uh, character controlling so she's actually going to be pretty decent for a crit build uh, if you don't have that mer very many uh five star units um because then you can because she increases critical rates she increases defense which helps proc uh any double buff Abilities they might have whether it be from worm prints or dragons or whatever. Okay um, So if you can practice you can possibly make like a critical hit build uh, With Rennie on your team even if you don't use Rennie herself as the main unit if you just have her on your team um, Just her passive alone would help increase the critical hit rate, which is pretty good on its own uh, on top of the fact that the the computer will automatically trigger her second ability increasing oh well Never mind. Ignore that last part. Okay, it only increases Rennie's defense. It doesn't increase the team's defense. Okay, but yeah, not not a bad unit. Nothing sticks out to me like, oh man, that's actually really good. But she's pretty decent from what I can tell. But other than that, that's it for today, guys. I just wanted to quickly go over the new units that came out in Trigalia Lost. Uh, Again, just a quick go over. In my opinion, Rena is the best. Ramona is still really good though. If you happen to get her, she's not too shabby. Um, and then Arctos is pretty good. Nothing too fancy, but he's pretty good. Uh, but other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that bell button. It's the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. Go ahead and let me know what your thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. And my name is Brian, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.